What's going on everybody? This is David and today I'm going to teach you how to properly set up your G-Sync compatible or G-Sync display. So most of the screens out there are going to be G-Sync compatible because most modern, modern manufacturers use FreeSync and then NVIDIA tests the monitor to see if it's good enough to be G-Sync compatible. And you can see if your uh, monitor is G-Sync compatible by going to Google and just typing in uh, G-Sync compatible NVIDIA and just go into this page and then you'll see here a few things so these G-Sync ultimate and this G-Sync means that the monitor has a an actual G-Sync module inside so the benefit of that is that it's a little more accurate and it'll go all the way down to one hertz whereas if you scroll down you'll see G-Sync compatible these are free sync monitors but they are good enough to be G-Sync compatible, and, uh, but unfortunately they don't go to all the way down to one hertz. They'll go down to like 48 to whatever the maximum refresh rate is. So for these monitors, you if you're playing like 30 FPS, you won't get the benefit of, of G-Sync basically. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the only real benefit of having an actual module is that it'll go all the way down to one hertz. But I mean, I wouldn't really want to play at 30 FPS anyways. So anyways, uh, let's go back. So there are a few things that you're going to want to do to fully utilize your new G-Sync display your, or your G-Sync compatible display. And th these are just uh, some of the things that I'll show you. So right, if you're using Windows 11, I'm assuming you are, right click <coughs> and click show more options and then go into NVIDIA control panel. Go into global settings. Uh, before you do that though, Make sure you have this set up. So set up G-Sync. It should automatically do this for you when you plug in a G-Sync compatible display. If it doesn't show up, uh, you might have to go in your monitor settings and um, enable FreeSync automatically. And then when, once it uh, enables, it should automatically detect and then you can enable it. I, I would recommend just enable for full screen mode only unless you play your games in window mode but i sometimes i found that like certain programs like the ea launcher if i have it on windowed it'll actually you um it'll actually detect the ea um window or launcher as like a game or or, or something or as a you know something that needs to be uh, uh compatible with the refresh rate so, and then um it'll actually turn that down the refresh rate to a really low value and it's kind of annoying so i just keep it on full screen mode only and i do play all my games on full screen and then after that you're going to want to go to manage 3d settings and you are going to have to actually turn on some things to have your uh, g-sync compatible display be fully utilized first thing you're going to want to do is yes you are going to have to turn on vertical zinc i know i thought you you know, you thought you're getting a G-Sync display, you're not going to have to worry about vertical zinc at all. Unfortunately, you still are going to have to use it because the refresh rate of your screen is not going to be exactly one-to-one -one with the FPS. It's going to try to be as close as possible, but sometimes you will see little micro, micro tears because it's not one-to-one, -one. it's not exact. So even though you're getting like 101 FPS, your refresh rate might be like 101.5, 102. You know, it might cycle between that. It's not exactly like one to one. So by turning on vertical zinc, you're going to be exactly one to one. It's still going to be um, matching the refresh rate of your FPS. However, you're still going to, you're, with vertical zinc, you're going to have an exactly um, tear free experience. So you're going to, you are going to want to turn on vertical zinc and it's not going to, do really anything to your to your latency maybe it's going to add like one millisecond or two milliseconds of latency uh, but to counteract that you go up here and you go to low latency mode and you're going to want to have it on ultra so you can have it on on as well um, but ultra is recommended because it's going to cap your frame rate for you so if you're playing a dx11 dx10 or a dx9 game or something that's not dx12 it's going to automatically cap your frame rate uh, below 120 hertz it's going to have it like at what i have it here 117 116 
FPS. And the reason it's going to do that, the reason it's not going to cap it at exactly 120 hertz, is because sometimes the uh, the FPS overshoots. So it'll it'll say that it's ha getting 120 hertz, but or 120 FPS, but sometimes it'll go to like 121, 122 real quick. You're not going to see it or it's going to do like 120.5, something like that. You're not going to see it in the FPS counter, but it, it is going to overshoot. So what that's going to do, what uh, it's going to um, give you like micro stutters or micro uh, tears in your, in your image. And for me, for my OLED screen, it's at the bottom half of the screen. So I'll get like little mini tears as I'm, for example, in Call of Duty, I notice this, uh, like, I notice this very much is on the bottom of the screen as I'm running on the bottom, I can see like little mini tears only on the bottom uh, screen. So it, it was really annoying. So I had it. That's when I found out I had to turn on vertical zinc and, or I had to, uh, rather cap my frame rate to 117 or turn on low latency mode. Also, I believe Nvidia reflex on plus boost is kind of the same thing. But I'm not sure, I don't remember if that version, the Reflex Boost, actually caps your frame rate. I could be wrong though. So that could, um, with the X12 games, that could be doing the same exact thing. However, um, if for some reason your game is not capping with Ultra, a low latency mode, or the Reflex is not working like Ultra is, you can uh, cap your frame rate automatically to 117. If you cap it out 120, like I said, it's gonna overshoot and it's gonna you're gonna have that weird tearing in uh, in your screen also you're gonna want to uh, go to program settings and you might not want to have your frame rate capped in every single game right so for example if you're playing something like apex legend legends where you're getting like you know 180 100 200 plus fps or overwatch 2 for example in that type of game you're gonna want to turn that off so i turn it off and then I turn off vertical zinc so I can get, obviously I'm not going to get the tear free experience, but at the same time, I'm getting such high FPS that it's not really a big deal. So for games, for me, for example, if I'm getting an average of over 150 FPS, I turn off all this stuff. If I'm getting like close to 120 FPS or a little below, and it's like bouncing between like, let's say 110 FPS to 150 FPS, like Halo Infinite, I will turn it on for that game. All right. That's it. Thank you guys for watching and uh, have a great day.